Uh, can you all hear me? I don't, I don't know. My microphone has been debatable recently. All right, cool. So, hey, um, this presentation is on TypeScript. It kind of assumes that you have some basic knowledge of JavaScript, but I think if you have knowledge of programming in general, it should be relatively easy to pick up. But if you have any questions, let me know in chat. I'll, I'll answer them. Um, yeah, so let's get started. So I'm Leonel Levan. Um, I like giving presentations. Find me at leonelevan.com. There's my GitHub and everything on there. So yeah. Okay, so there are three chapters to this. One of them is significantly longer than the others, um, which is number one, uh, which is the syntax and the tighter integration of TypeScript with your text editor makes it easier to write code. Um, chapter two is about how TypeScript catches errors that are not trivial before your code hits production. And chapter three is that TypeScript can be converted to JavaScript super easily because in practice, there's not that many places that can run TypeScript natively. And even the places that claim to are kind of cheating. So yeah, let's get started. So chapter one, syntax and integration. So this is actually a quote from a Slack engineer. Um, Slack uh, used to be built in JavaScript, and then I believe they moved over to Flow, and then which was Microsoft, not Microsoft, Facebook's attempt at making uh, like basically a TypeScript type system. And then eventually uh, TypeScript got built and they moved over to TypeScript. And they said that TypeScript was such a boon to our stability and sanity that we started using it for all new code within days of starting the conversion. So there's actually a great article. Um, I'll probably send it out or something after after this meeting that you can read if you're interested in how Slack converted their code base, but it's definitely an interesting read. Yeah, so the syntax, uh, there's kind of three three things you need to know is that there's it's just JavaScript. In the end of the, at the end of the day, all valid JavaScript is valid TypeScript. Um, yeah, uh, and then we'll go over some basic types and then custom types uh, and interfaces. So yeah, let's get started. So to convert your JavaScript to TypeScript, rename your file from uh, a .js to a .ts. That's it. Uh, all JavaScript is valid TypeScript. That's not super helpful though. You're not gonna get anything from doing that. So let's talk about specifics. All right, so let's create a function. So here we have a function in regular JavaScript. Um, the issue with this function is that actually is not really clear on what's going on. Like if I renamed the function to, I don't know, like A1, it'd be pretty difficult for someone unless they read what the actual function did to understand what it was actually doing, what inputs it takes and what outputs it would, it would get. Um, in TypeScript, it's a lot more explicit. Uh, so I would say X is a number, Y is a number, and it outputs a number. Um, yeah, so it's pretty clear that if I want to create a sum function, all I'd have to do uh, to, to run the, the function is, is to give it two numbers, and then I'll return one number. And even if I don't know what's going on inside of it, maybe there's a bug, but at least I know that the output would be something that I expect. So yeah. Uh, how does that help though? Because like right now it seems like that didn't really change much. So yeah, let's run the function. So in regular JavaScript, if you ran this function, there would be a there'd be no errors. Um, in TypeScript, if you try to run the function like this, uh, it would give us an error. Uh, argument of type string is not assignable to parameter of type number, um, which is basically trying to say, hey, stupid, um, like you can't you can't put high in a sum function, like you can't have a string. And if the first thing was uh, was actually uh, correct, if the first uh, input was a number and the second thing was the array, it would yell at us uh, for being stupid about having an array in a sum function. Yeah. So let's create a variable. Um, so what we see uh, in, in regular JavaScript is it looks like this. Like if I wanna create a variable, I can let X equals high. And then I can create a variable and then assign it later, let y, and then y equals 100. In TypeScript, um, if it's obvious what the type of your thing is, in this case, x is obviously a string. You don't have to specify, TypeScript will know that it's supposed to be a string. So you get all of the advantages of the TypeScript without having to write more code. And in the, in the second case, because you're declaring the variable later, um, you actually have to tell TypeScript what the variable is. So in this, or the type of the variable is. So in this case, I have to let TypeScript know that the type is a number um, for anything to be, to be practical. So here are the takeaways from this. TypeScript automatically figures out types if it can, 
And you can define the type of variable using the same syntax as we saw earlier in the function. So like just to go back to the functions with the colon and then space and then the type. Yeah. Cool. So to find type for variable, use the colon type syntax. All right, syntax, let's define our own types. So there's two ways to define your own types, um, uh, type and interface. One of them happens more often than the other, but they both do get used pretty frequently. So this is actually a lot of information. So let's go over it uh, one by one. So the thing at the top is we're making a type called alignment, uh, or I guess align in this case. So we have a thing that is uh, a, a type that the only val valid values for something that is a type align is left or center or right. That's what that means. So we have uh, left or center or right. Um, and if afterwards, when we're doing demo, I'll show you that you could actually put anything. You could put like the string left or the number two or something like that. You can have any list of types, but the or syntax is very common if you have a list of things that it can be. Um, yeah. So that's not super helpful though, because like it's quite rare when number or Boolean doesn't really match your needs. And if you do, you could always uh, define in one line. Again, we'll go over that later. So the thing that's a lot more practical is the interface. So an interface basically tells uh, JavaScript how the object is shaped. So in this case, we have a user uh, interface and we can see that all users have an ID, which is a number, a name, which is a string, activated, which is a Boolean, um, politics, which is actually the custom type that we defined earlier, which is a line, and then nickname, which is optionally a string. So what question mark colon means, it's different than regular colon. It means that it might exist, but it might not exist. So you, so it, so it tells TypeScript like before your code runs that you should check if the nickname exists before you try to use it. So it kind of forces that, uh, forces you to write good code on that front. So we can see at the bottom, we defined a user without any errors with an ID that is 10, a name that's Tommy, activated, which is true, and politics, which is left. So yeah. So let's move on to error catching. Um, so like how does TypeScript help practically, right? So error catching, um, there's a whole community of people who try to uh, sell TypeScript to you by showing like weird errors that it can catch because it like technically, you know, maybe it's like a, like there's like a function inside a function and I'm not a salesperson. I'm not trying to sell you on TypeScript. I think it's useful. I think there are some errors that it can type uh, that it can catch. Most of the errors that it catches are when you're stupid and has nothing to do with some obscure feature. So what's the error here? Actually, I want you guys to try and answer in chat. Uh, we have a function compact um, that basically just tries to get the first 10 elements of an array. So anyone have any idea what the error is in this function? JavaScript show will not catch it uh, and will crash at runtime. There will be no errors in, in, a, in a regular JavaScript thing. Anyone have any ideas? Used or, not R. Yep, so that is a error there. That's the, the most common answer to this question. And that's correct, yeah. Uh, I am using or here and not R. It's again, like you'd think that JavaScript would catch it, but because it doesn't know anything about any variables when you're writing it, it can't tell you. There's a more subtle error here actually, that uh, we're using dot trim instead of dot slice. So if we wanna fix that, you know, like here's, here's the error you pointed out. And then here's the, the more subtle error that I've not seen a single person catch, which is dot trim should be dot slice because arrays don't have a trim uh, like a method. So this is something that TypeScript would catch. Um, so here, uh, like what we could do is we could define array as a, as, as a type and we'll see, well, we'll write this code later uh, in the demo afterwards. Um, and I'll show you how TypeScript would catch uh, this mistake. Cool. Um, and then this is kind of just for the technical nerds. Um, not super practical for you all because in general, you won't be doing this yourself uh, by hand. There are things that do it for you, but it's just nice to know. So um, in general, you have to transform, that's the official term for it, transform TypeScript to JavaScript before running it. So nothing can really run TypeScript directly. There are a few tools that kind of give you the illusion of doing this. So Deno and, and Bun, 
uh, are tools that they claim they can run uh, TypeScript uh, like natively. They don't really do this. They just convert the TypeScript to JavaScript really fast and then run it. So it's it's not quite the same thing. But I mean, it it works basically uh, good enough for it to be uh, a, a thing to run TypeScript. There's also uh, TS Node, which is actually for Node.js, which kind of does the same thing. Uh, and again, it, it just uses it just transforms the the, the TypeScript into JavaScript for running it. So yeah. So to actually run type, uh, TypeScript, uh, we need to transform into JavaScript. So TypeScript is actually designed in a way to make this super easy. Um, this is actually a screenshot from their their uh, their website where TypeScript becomes JavaScript literally by just deleting stuff. So if you remove the types, it just is JavaScript again. Like there's no there's no other fancy stuff. You're not redefining how functions are defined. It's literally just deleting the types, and that's it. So yeah, before we move on to the demo, um, does anyone have any questions? Also, you can find me at my website or my GitHub. Yeah. All right. Um, not seeing any questions in the chat. Let's move on to the demo. Hold on. Um, screen, yeah, here you go. All right, so I'm in VS Code right now, and this is just my preferred ID of choice. So let's actually first uh, write that, that compact function. I was going to do this demo first, but it doesn't really matter. Um, so let's run this, uh, this compact function. So, uh, is dot length is greater than 10, and then return r dot, oops, I should make our thing here, r dot trim 0 to 10, or otherwise return r. So you can see here, JavaScript does not complain. They are, it, it thinks this is perfectly fine. Um, and then if we try to run it, actually, we'll see that it, it is not perfectly fine. So let's, I don't know, let's run a bit of values here. So I'm actually going to use Deno to run this. And it's going to say uncut reference error or it's not defined. Um, if we copy the same code into TypeScript, we're going to see that it immediately starts crying, which is the correct response here. It says um, the duplicate function implementation. Okay, that we can ignore that for now because it thinks that the JS and the TS are like interacting with each other, but it's not. But it will point out that cannot find name or, or because it doesn't exist. Let's fix that. And we'll notice that if we run the TypeScript here, uh, nothing happens because in this case, we're not hitting this function. So let's increase the number of arguments to make it greater than 10. I think that should be good. We run it again. Uncut reference error, R trim is not a function. But yours, but I claimed earlier that it would catch this error because you know dot trim doesn't exist. And it does, you just have to tell TypeScript that you're expecting an array. So here I could be very specific. I could say I want an array of numbers, in which case it catches immediately. But sometimes they don't know, right? Maybe this is an array of like strings as well, or maybe there's some 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 Boolean values in here. Um, this is not correct. So what we really would would need to be doing here is an array of any. Any uh, any is a type that, that represents any type, which seems pretty intuitive. Um, and in this case, it's exactly what we need because the input is could be of any type. So we'll catch here again that doesn't exist. So we should use slice. And if we run it again, bam, it works as expected. Cool. So that's kind of that demo um, done. So TypeScript is very natural to write once you get the hang of it. Like, let's create a, you know, like a list of users, right? And let's create a function that uh, adds a user. Um, actually, let's not do that. Let, let's, I'll, I'll explain how TypeScript is useful here. Uh, usually, if I wanted to add a user to this, I could use user.push. I could give the user an ID. I could give them a name. Uh, I could give them, I don't know. Uh, cool or not, which is a Boolean, obviously. Um, I'm trying to think. And then maybe a list of activities that it like doing. Right. Hiking. Cool. So this would work. Uh, maybe console.log uh, users at the end of this. And if we run this, we'll see that we get some sort of user here. Right. Thing is, this. let's imagine this is like, I don't know, line 10. 
uh, in our program. And then way, way, way further down, maybe we have a code for accepting a new user account, you know, maybe a V line, like, I don't know, that seems reasonable. We try again and we try to push, I don't know, something like this, right? We, we don't really remember what users looks like, um, but we, we, we kind of get the general fields right. And then we run it and we'll see that it actually JavaScript's fine with it. They have no, it has no errors. However, when there's a function, you know, like you're trying to, to figure out here, um, you know, I don't know, something like uh, name short, which uh, uh, we'll do activity, like first activity, let's do first activity. So it's a function that tries to get the first activity uh, of a user, right? So we take a user and get the first activity. So if we're writing this and we knew what users looked like, we could pretty easily see that it's, uh, um, it would look, First, if uh, if user uh, dot activities dot length is greater than zero, and if so, um, return user activity zero. Probably otherwise, you want to return something like an error, but we'll just return for now. So if we look um, here, we can run first activity, and then we can use, put the correct user in here. So we'll see that, that works. Uh, let's console dot log this out. And I'll remove the other one just to make things simpler here. And we'll see that it says hex. If we try to run the second user here, though, we're going to see it's going to say undefined. Um, so that's kind of unexpected uh, in a sense. I'm actually a little surprised that this didn't error out. Uh, it's possible that I'm actually curious on why that didn't error out. That's interesting. Um, JavaScript is very permissive as a language, so it's probably just like. Um, So I think, what is the point? That's crazy. What does this mean? Okay. So basically what's happening here is we're, we're doing undefined is greater than zero, which happens to be false. So the fact that we're not erroring out here is a bit, you know, strange. So, so we're actually not running this code. Uh, so it avoids an error, but like just barely. And this is, it would not tell us, like if we ran this uh, application and we tried to test it, we would see that we would think that everything's working fine when clearly one of our users is super broken and, and should not be defined this way. So JavaScript would just allow that to exist. Um, so in TypeScript, we kind of take this approach differently. Um, so let's move this over to TypeScript file, right? And I'll, I'll, I'll comment these out so that most of these errors go away. So we'll see that it's yelling. It says uh, argument of type blah, blah, blah is never uh, assignable to type, uh, type never. So basically why it's complaining about this is that by default, if you don't give an array, uh, like a specific type, it'll assume that this is the type. Never um, basic, basically means that it'll never be defined. Uh, and clearly something is defined, so we kind of break that rule. So we have to tell TypeScript what our type could be. So we could uh, do like interface user and then try to like build something here where there's like a number. We could do that. Uh, and then we could put user here and then we'd be fine. But in practice, that's not uh, super, super useful um, because sometimes you don't, you don't use it all the time. You don't use it everywhere. So it's kind of like, whatever, I, I'm, you want to write something quick. So what instead you can do is just actually just write it in line. So I could say that the ID is a number, um, that the name is a string, a pool is a Boolean, and activities is a string of ring, right? And so we'll see that our first thing doesn't have any errors. For this one, it'll point out that uh, pool should be Boolean. So we'll be like, all right, sure, let's make that a Boolean. And that activities should be a string type, uh, a, a string array. So we can actually put an empty array if we want, um, by the way. Uh, we'll see though that once we fix those errors, another error shows up, which is that it's missing ID. So ID is kind of missing here. So it'll even let us know about that too. So now when we run this function, um, we'll see actually that it still still gives undefined. So, you know, we fixed it, um, activity zero, whatever. Uh, but we can see actually here that the function we defined assumes that the user is of type any. Um, so any type, as we kind of saw earlier, it could be anything. So it's not super useful. And this function will actually have the same issues uh, as earlier. Uh, and we won't get all of the nice uh, editor integration. So to fix that, let's stop being lazy. All right, let's let's move this to an interface. Let's be proper about it. Um, yeah. So 
interface user boom um, and then we can actually tell the function that the first input is is user and we'll see now uh, by the way this is why it's super nice that if i type user and i do dot it'll tell me the properties that exist on user right if i didn't do this and i typed user dot i would get nothing like i i, I it has no idea what a user is so now that we specify it Writing code is actually a lot easier because now I could be like, oh, okay, well, maybe we add an activity here or something like that, right? So that's kind of the uh, the advantage of TypeScript. That's kind of the genius of TypeScript. Um, and that's why I personally use it for like all of my projects. Um, all of my web projects to be more specific, I guess. I think there's something else uh, to mention and that TypeScript actually integrates quite well with uh, basically any modern library or framework like React actually works with TypeScript, except uh, instead of using, because React uses a uh, JSX, right? Which is kind of, I'm, I'm kind of getting off topic here, but uh, usually you want to write your files in .jsx, um, which is, as you can see, it's, it even shows in the editor. It's some sort of, uh, you know, maybe we have a div or something like that. Like it, it, it's kind of interesting. The format is not quite JavaScript, but it's something like JavaScript, right? The thing with, uh, JSX files, though, is that it's not TypeScript. This is JavaScript again. And we don't get any of the nice, you know, like type or anything like that. So we'll see here that it's like uh, type I aliases can only be used in TypeScript files. And this is not TypeScript file. So what's nice is actually the TypeScript team built a spec for TSX, which is specifically a TypeScript um, version of JSX. And so we'll see here, actually, it catches an error that the, that the JavaScript version didn't, which is that returning in the global scope doesn't, doesn't work and will error out, and TypeScript catches that. So, yeah. I mean, that's all I have for the demo. Um, I don't know. I, I guess I can show you the, the thing that I promised, which is that types can be, like, anything you want here. So I could do left or zero or five or true. And then if I try to have a variable, uh, well, I guess let's do let here. Let test, uh, which is a type of line. I could assign it to zero. That would be fine. Type type of one would not work because it's not in the list. Type five works. Type false doesn't work. Type true does work. Uh, left works, but any other string doesn't. So yeah, I think that's that's all I promised to show you all. So if anyone has any questions, uh, cool. If you do like ask them in the chat, I'll, I'll be happy to answer them. If you don't, um, that's kind of all I have prepared for today.